Hi there, it's Polly here. Yay, with tea talk. Mm -hmm. With tea. Yay, and Mr. Snoots. Um, yeah, so uh, these are driven off um, comments and questions that come in uh, my reviews and so on. And uh, yeah, so what was my question here? Oh, someone's asking about solo role playing games. What they have been and are they any good, you know, etc. So, all right, so let's um, let's reel right back because solos came in very, very quickly. So, Dungeons and Dragons comes out, and um, very close on the heels of D and D was a system called Tunnels and Trolls. Now, um, Tunnels and Trolls, in its initial iteration, um. It's got a lot of adherence today, and it is fun. It is a good, it's a good system, but it uses kind of two dice mechanics in it. One of those is a saving throw system where you are rolling dice. It's the first one that does this, by the way, really. You're kind of rolling dice against an escalating difficulty level depending on the difficulty of the task. Traveler did say roll two dice and get an eight or higher, but it didn't increase the target number depending on the difficulty of the task. It just gave you dice roll modifiers so you could move your dice up and down. But that's what Tunnels and Trolls did. Two dice, you've got some base core modifiers from your character, saving through modifiers. You're adding that to the result and you see if that gets a target number or higher. TNT is who you can thank for that mechanic that everybody uses now. Um, the other thing that TNT did was have a combat system and this is it was fun but it's also kind of what lets it down they, they've met, they've messed with it now and it is a better game now I feel but what you do is you had um, bonuses from your characteristics basically every point um, above 12 and a 3d6 rolled characteristic gets you a bonus to combat for set things like dexterity and strength and I think intelligence and luck but likewise for every point those are below nine it's a negative one that gives you your combat ads. So um, if I was straight average, then I'd have zero combat ads. If I'm straight average, but I've got like a uh, 14 strength, I'd have plus two combat ads because I'm two above 12. Then they had a whole list of weapons and um, your, you had set strength and dexterity le um, limits for those weapons. So you'd go shopping and see what was the best weapon that you could use given your characteristic constraints. And they had a set number of combat dice that they did. So what you did was you rolled that number of combat dice and added your combat adds and your opponent did the same. The lower number was subtracted from the higher number. So if I roll four dice and I don't know, I get 16 and I've got my plus two adds, good, that becomes an 18. But if the monster, he does a roll and he ends up with 12, good. We subtract his 12 from my 18. Bing! Six points is left over. That's what goes onto the loser as damage. If they've got armor, that subtracts from the damage. All right, well, if he's got five points of armor, I've just done one point to him. Um, now, one of the initial iterations of the game um, pretty much said for monsters, not so much for people, um, they do damage depending on their hit points, their monster rating. So as you did damage to them, their monster rating went down, and when it went down to zero, they went dead. But the damage they dish out depended on their monster rating. So it did snowball a bit. If you started to whittle a monster down, it would roll less dice, which means it's less likely to beat you on the next one, and you'll beat it by a higher margin. So once you started getting a few hits on it, you could start really overcoming it fairly rapidly. So you get ping, ping, bigger ping, calm down. So... Okay, um, not a bad idea. However, if you both had armor and you were fairly evenly matched, it was very hard to get hits. So they began to bring in some extra little rules about how um, you know you always take a minimum of you know one hit per dice the other guy's rolling and etc. So all right, so you know some minor tweaks. However, this was a very early system, and one of the first things they did was bring out solos, and that's one of the reasons why this game has survived to this day. The Tunnels and Trolls solo games were brilliant absolutely brilliant i have a whole mess of them over there i reordered some from their website you could go to the flying buffalo website and these are kind of old school spiral bound um printed choose your own adventure style and i've written many of those professionally myself 
So, but they really did pioneer, they pioneered this system where you have a paragraph, gives you a description, and then it gives some choices or directs you to make some roles and you are directed to other numbered paragraphs depending on either the choices you made or the roles you made. So, you know, you are exploring your way down this tunnel that's filled with mist. Suddenly you feel something go click beneath your feet. Um, are you going to um, freeze in place? Are you going to try and um, dive forward uh, out of the way? Are you going to try and leap in the air? Um, oh, okay. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to do a dive and roll out of the way. Ah, dive and roll out of the way. And I say, right, um, make a dexterity roll. If you um, make it, go to here. If you don't make it, go to there. So, you know, ah, I didn't make it. Oh, well, I, um, uh, um, a big blade sticks out of the wall and um, um, does this much damage to you continue on to here. Or, ah, you dive and roll. Ah, this blade misses you. Um, you wind up at the other end of the corridor. Ah, whew, you know, good. Um, you, huh, you look up, you see the corridor is a T-junction. You can go left to so-and-so, right to so-and-so, or you can um, take a look at these strange little niche in the wall which has a little statue in it. If so, go to here. So it was these kind of choices. Limited, limited, but um, they started to make a real art out of it. You needed to purchase the role-playing game in order to play the game because it was a fairly large... It was a full role-playing game. It had many, many lists of weapons, many, 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 many lists of spells. Um, all this kind of thing was was in the separate volumes, so so these they weren't self-contained in any way. But they were really, really well done. There were some fantastic ones. Like, there was at one um, city of... City of I liked, there was one called um, Doom, Doom Race, Dungeon Doom, I forget. Anyway, uh, you are um, basically, you're criminal, uh, and uh, these guys basically, uh, you start off naked Doom, that was it. You're stripped naked, and these guys basically, um, there's a dungeon entrance, the local city guards start hurling you through the dungeon entrance, and then you see they start stringing their bows. So the first thing you have to do is run into the dungeon entrance. All right, you can't get out there. There's two guys who are going to shoot you if you turn up. And then, you know, once you're in, they clang the door. But now you have no equipment and you have to start exploring this dungeon and there's things there and you're trying to basically, oh, maybe I can snap off the stalagmite and use it as a uh, as a club. Um, uh, you know, oh, 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 it's really cold down here, but, oh, you found, you, you, you kill something and take its skin or you, you find a nest of, like, horrible old rags that something's been sleeping in. Oh, put them on clothes. Oh, God, there's an underground lake. You've got to swim over it. There were some great ones. Um, there was a whole city that they did. I loved it. Um, and the, the thing had a really interesting, interesting feel to it. So that remained the, the standard um, for solo games, but they did an excellent job. Now, um, the next kind of thing that people remember fondly, now it wasn't part of my personal experience, it particularly amongst the English players, they love the um, fighting fantasy which are the Steve Jackson, not that Steve Jackson, the other one, um, a English designer Steve Jackson brought out the fighting fantasy books. Now, these were done usually in kind of paperback book format. I believe they had a simplified... It, it's, a, it's a good, simple role-playing system that they have, and the essence of it is in the front of the book. They did later produce books that had the game system and so on in it so you could make more nuanced characters but as far as i believe the early ones in particular there is like a character generation system in, in the books and because of that you didn't need to have like a you know two forty dollar books and the supplement in order to actually you know play the solos which means it's accessible to kids with a lower budget. And because it was a game system that was very easy to learn and um, didn't require a huge amount of sort of thought, you know, you could just sort of, good, I can make a character and I can play it. That meant that the younger audience really locked onto these. So these were successful with younger players the way the Tunnels and Trolls books never could be because 
They just required you to have a whole game and kind of to be part of role-playing culture. Whereas the fighting fantasy games, you didn't need to be like really a and d player or anyone. They were certainly a gateway that led a lot of people into role-playing games, but you didn't have to be a role-playing gamer to play them. So, uh, you know, marketing-wise, um, a very, very, very fine idea. They used pretty much the same format as um, Tunnels and Trolls. It, they've got a series of adventures which take you from numbered paragraph to numbered paragraph, limiting your choices. Um, and these went on for many, 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 many adventures. And I have to say, um, like I said, this wasn't part of my um, experience. I still play the Tunnels and Trolls adventures because they're sweet. But I recently, there's a local game club which started up. Hi, guys. Uh, and what they did was uh, one of them wanted to run Advanced Fighting Fantasy, which is the role-playing game based on these fighting fantasy books. And, of course, there are a lot of people like, I've got to play because this is such a part of their their teenage years not part of mine but I was very happy to play and I have to say I had a riotously good time I'm going to do a review of the games I'm just going to put them on order now because it was a really good system I really liked the feel of it and that simplicity the simplicity of the system actually meant that we kind of spent a lot more time engaged in the game as opposed to engaged with the system there's a lot to be said for a very simple system i liked it i liked it a lot but anywho, anywho um that was gold standard for solo role-playing games you had to have an adventure that someone else produced in order to play and off you went but now i'm seeing something very different starting to turn up if you check my reviews you'll see i've recently done one called 12 years and 12 years is fairly typical of some of the current solo role-playing games that are coming out. I've also done one called, I think it's Labyrinths and Lycanthropes, or it might be Lycanthropes and Labyrinths. Another game is designed for a group of people, but it works as a solo. These are games that are solo games that they either have a more sandbox arrangement or they're completely open. You can play them without needing pre-done adventures specifically, specifically. 12 years is typical. So to recap 12 years, what it is is it's a hex crawl and dungeoneering game. But what will happen in it is a series of random charts allow you to randomly generate a party of adventurers. There is an end goal in mind and there are rules in the core scenario that comes in the rules that tell you how to achieve that end goal. In the case of 12 years, you have 12 years of time in which to find the magic widget that will save the kingdom when you go on this final quest. But then the world's your oyster. You have to explore it. The game randomly generates people, terrain and challenges that you face. And it also generates dungeons and um, tombs and so on that you explore it randomly generates the architecture the inhabitants and so on and somewhere in that randomness you are essentially telling yourself a cool story so um that's that's an interesting way of playing it you still need a book that's got a core scenario with the how to win this and the random generator charts um, and uh, so in the case of 12 years, they've got a second scenario. Now, there's a lovely one, beautiful one that I did called Colossal. Again, very fine example of this style. Colossal sets up a stunning um, little world. And again, it uses a series of random generators. So you can design a character and... There's rules for the experience of these characters. This is a lot deeper production than, say, 12 years. This, these are big, beautiful color books, and there are many supplements. But this is all about exploration. So there are rules here for creating a world as you move out into it. There are dangers that are randomly created by the random generators, but 
through it you'll start to create a story for your character and you are kind of encouraged to make the links yourself between the randomness that you've created and make a narrative. So with these games, you'll often get like a journal will come with them so you can write out the story of your character. You know, I've uh, I've gone forth today. I've seen this, this creature from afar yet again. I'm wondering where it comes from and where it goes. Maybe I'll see it again. Later on, the random generation says you did see something. So, oh, I'm going to say it's the same guy. Ah, yet again, I've sighted the elusive beast, but um, uh, I, I did come close, but it looks too dangerous. Um, um, so I kept, I've kept my distance. Maybe I can um, find a way to um, discover its darker secrets. Uh, yeah, in game terms, you encountered this thing and it looked too butch, so you decided, I will roll to evade. Yes, I've evaded. So, you know, you're making a story from the randomness. But it's not that earlier thing of having to go from specific paragraph specific paragraph to specific choice so we are getting these um random generators and this is a nice thing this is another aspect to um to solo role playing um the um labyrinths on lycanthropes i really liked that one because what that <laughs> What that does is, you can do it with a team of people, but you can do it solo. Uh, you take a blank piece of paper and you write down some bloody stupid um, names and locations. Um, uh, what is this? Oh, this is the. Um, uh, I'm going to do a big spike. I'm going to say this is the point of impossibility. Uh, I'm going to do the uh, swamp of swampiness over here. I'm going to do the um, doom cave of doomness uh, over here. I'm going to put the <laughs> the floating X. Um, and uh, right, so you put these out there, then. Kind of draw some sort of map boundaries around them. Uh, somewhere on the place you put uh, the big city um, and somewhere you put the village because that's where you come from and now you basically decide that you're going to approach one of these points and that's going to be one of your first starting points. You also mark one of these as being the place where the big juju bad guy actually hangs out and that one's way tougher so you want to build yourself up before you get there but then this game uses decks of cards to create labyrinths inside these. And you've also designed monsters before you begin. You write down some very silly monster ideas and you randomly generate what their uh, strengths and powers are, but you make a suite of different monsters that are tied to different cards before you go. And then as you go through these dungeons, the cards are dealt face down and as you explore, you start turning these things over. And some of these dictate the type of room and um, exits and tricks and traps. Others designate what kind of monster or what kind of boss monster. The boss monsters are things that you overcome in order to gain major rewards in the dungeon. The other monsters don't really have much in the way of rewards on them, but they can slow you down. And then you can make more monsters as the thing goes on and more strange crazy stuff at the end of each one you can make something and there are certain circumstances in which you can make nemeses for yourselves which are named creatures that you know escape and they wait for you in later things so you do build like uh you build up your own environment you create your own environment to play and the environment continues to build itself as you go on so again you're making this whole adventure yourself you're not going through an adventure someone else made so, um, yeah, so those are kind of the, the styles and techniques I have seen so far for solo stuff. Um, now, obviously, at any given stage, you can kind of sandbox for yourself, virtually any role-playing game, because they've all got random encounter charts. You won't get that deep a game out of it but you know you could do a hex crawl you could do a dnd hex crawl just i'm traveling here i'm traveling here oh an encounter what does it say i've encountered you know oh well it says i've just bumped into a griffin oh well roll for your and your reaction but you're not going to really have the tricks the traps the ability to really smoothly and easily generate a dungeon that you go through but you you can do it the tools were always there it's just the specifically designed solo games obviously are designed to allow you to do this and to be a bit of a challenge um so as of today um tunnels and trolls is still there highly recommended and there's a new edition of the actual games out which is way better than the previous ones so i've done a review um advanced fighting fantasy you'll find those books 
Um, they're available both from ooh, the original publisher, but you'll also find them on Drive Through. What those are, though, those aren't the original solo games. This is a role-playing game based on those. So what they've done is some of the more famous um, solo adventures that you could buy are now presented there as adventures that you can take a party of adventures through in a in a, a normal role-playing game with a party and a dungeon master so okay so for those of you who enjoyed those a different experience but i believe you can still get the um, fighting fantasy books out there um but there is a plethora of solo role-playing games out there um which are really sort of challenging and very sweet uh, i highly recommend colossal which is beautiful just simply a beautiful piece of work um really do suggest you have a look at it it keeps building so since my review of colossal which was only a couple of months ago there have been more expansions for colossal unleashed and it has a pretty vigorous little online environment uh and there are lots of people um like um max moon games and so on who are doing things like um 12 years and these are really well done um and uh, yeah there are others others out there absolutely others out there you will find them go on to uh drive through and look up solo role-playing games it's 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 a search category that will turn up games and they will tend to be these random generator style games today and each of them is challenging and each of them is damn fun and um the things I like about these, okay, so uh, I love travel. Um, and uh, for those of you who haven't been on the channel for that long, so uh, I had cancer and was basically not expected to survive, period. Uh, but I did because I'm an old war gamer and uh, we're really good at making um, saving throws. So, haha. However, once I got past the five year, um, hey, you're actually officially a survivor rate, uh, yeah. I decided to get out there and just keep seeing spectacular things again because five years trapped in one place was bad. And um, but that does mean that I end up with uh, you know all that airport time and uh, long flights. So I love taking solo games with me when I travel because they can be something cool to play on planes. And um, sometimes I'm just you know in hotel rooms at night. And yeah, I've had to call it quits, but I'm still awake. So yeah, it's, it can be fun running them. And they're also kind of fun to have at. Um, conventions and so on as well uh just during downtime um and wackily enough they're a very good way of introducing very young or new players particularly at conventions where you get kids turn up and they're wondering what role-playing games are having a solo game is kind of an interesting way of talking them through what a role-playing game is you can sit there and you narrate and read it to them and give them their choices and it's kind of a good way of introducing them into that idea of I'm playing another person, I'm making the choices of that person, I'm using the skills of that person. So do you like that? Well, that's what these umpired games are here over at the table, where you'll be running a thing like this, but this person over here will be guiding you through the story rather than this book. Come over and play. So they, they still remain what I think fighting fantasy did so well and i think they operate as a fantastic gateway for new players so um so it's a genre that i i do love and um i've always been tempted to do some more myself one of my first jobs wackily enough was doing a computerized set of um these solo games called maces and magic a computer game publisher asked me to do them Back in the days when uh, computer programs were recorded on cassette tape, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes, indeed. So, yes, I, I have done some of these, and I'd like to do some more. In fact, I did the, uh, like, the Lord of the Rings um, parser games, which were essentially paragraph-style games writ large. Um, so, yes, I have. I guess I have personally been involved in this, um, this genre as well, um, sometimes even with computer accompaniment. Uh, but, yeah, I'd like to do some sometime. They'd be heavy going to write i'd need to know there was a, an audience in this day and age but um I, th I think it's a genre worthy of a great deal of love and respect um, probably way more love and respect than it normally gets though as i said that fighting fantasy community yeah, with the moment you even mentioned the game like <gasps> the field so you know bless them bless you all anyway um that's just a little chat on uh, solo role-playing games um 
a very, very fine genre. So, cheers everybody, cheers from Mr. Snoots, me, and uh, we'll see you again. Um, keep playing, and <laughs> and sometimes that just means playing with yourself. Woohoo! Okay, bye!